Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Winning Cross-Selling and Upselling Strategies with Baskin Analytics. We are very excited to host you for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, and during the next 30 minutes, we hope to not only demonstrate the value of Basket Analytics for both brands and retailers, uh, but also hoping to walk you through some of the enhancement that BDSA has recently made to our Basket Analytics product. Uh, that includes more granularity to be, and also the ability to be able to isolate and compare baskets um, at the brand brand portfolio, brand, and even product level. Before we jump in, uh, just a few housekeeping items to note. This presentation is being recorded. It will be delivered to you via email along with the deck. Uh, so don't feel like you have to, to take frantic notes. Uh, you are all in listen-only mode, uh, but we do have a functionality to type in questions within your chat box. Um, please do type in questions. We'll save some time at the end for Rick to answer some one-on-one -on -one questions. Uh, while we may not have time to reach all questions, we'll certainly reach out to you afterwards. Um, and regardless, we would absolutely love to talk to each and every one of you more after the presentation about Basket Analytics and all things BDSA. Uh, so please don't hesitate to either reach out to your con uh, account manager if you have one or to reach us at info at bdsa.com. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So as most of you are likely aware, BDSA is, of course, the leading source of global cannabis data and insights. Uh, our core services do fall under these three major buckets. Um, our retail sales tracking, which is all about what is happening at retail, what's selling, uh, for what price, when, and for how much. Uh, and it is essentially at its core consumer behavior as well. Uh, our retail sales tracking product covers 12 markets in the U.S. Plus, uh, as of tomorrow, we are launching Lucky 13, so we'll be launching New Jersey. You heard it here first. Very exciting uh, news for us here at BDSA. Uh, our second bucket, of course, once you understand what's happening at retail, often want to understand the whys, um, and that's where our consumer insights come in, which is all about understanding who your customer is, uh, from a very, very granular level between not just demographics and psychographics, but also need states, behaviors, purchase motivators, uh, much, much, much more. Uh, and also then to round it out, our forecast product gives you the 40,000 foot view, the big picture, uh, market sizing, market growth, uh, areas of opportunity. Uh, so of course, within those major product lines, we do have many custom modules, products, and services, including what we're here to talk about today, which is our newly relaunched basket analytics service. Uh, this service is also available in those same 12, soon to be 13 markets as our retail sales tracking product. Um, so without further ado, I would love to introduce some of the brains behind the operation here at BDSA. Um, Rick Maturo is our Director of Professional Services. He has been involved in cannabis research one way or another for, I think, Rick, it's at least the past seven years. Uh, first through a company of his own that he started, um, and then for three years at Nielsen IQ, who purchased said company. Um, and now we're very, very pleased and lucky to have him here on staff, um, helping us understand and dive into all things consumer insights, market measurement, and market sizing. Um, and so, Rick, without further ado, take it away, please. Awesome. Well, thank you, Liz, for that lovely introduction. Hello, everyone. As Liz said, I'm extremely excited to be with you here today to walk through some of the basket uh, analytics enhancements that uh, we have put forth here. So before we jump into the actual presentation, you know, let's just level set. Uh, for those on the phone who might not be uh, familiar with what a basket is in general or in BDSA speech. So whenever we're talking about a basket, what we're really talking about is each specific consumer transaction that gets rung up at the retailer or the dispensary. Um, and those baskets could be inclusive of uh, baskets that have just a single item in them. So just think someone purchasing a single package of gummies. Uh, those baskets could have multiple items from multiple categories. So think of someone purchasing a gummy and a uh, vape pen in the same instance. Um, or those baskets could also have 
uh, multiple items from the same category. So again, think of someone buying uh, two packages of gummies. So that's where BASC is in BDSA speak, but why are baskets important for brands and retailers to consider? Well, one of the main reasons why baskets are so important is obviously you can look at things like what brands are selling the best or which products are selling best, but baskets provide more granular detail about what's actually happening at the point of sale. And more importantly, when examining baskets uh, individually, we can get a better sense for how uh, different types of products are grouping together at the point of sale, whether that's uh, specific products that are in the same category, specific products that might be in different categories, uh, could be products that are from different uh, brand houses or different brands, or it could even be understanding how two specific uh, product SKUs interact together. But all this really does is provide a much more granular view to help retailers optimize their sales um, at the dispensary, as well as arm brands with the knowledge to better inform retailers about how they can optimize or why it would be advantageous to utilize their specific brands or uh, assortment of brands in various cross category promotions or cross merchandising activities. So what can basket analytics answer for you? Well, obviously there's lots of applications uh, for BBSA's basket analytics product, but in terms of the most common uses for the product, uh, we came up with this list of about six different uh, key modules that can really help address. And really with all of this, what we're looking for is key, actionable, data-driven decisions. So basket analytics can help uh, brands and manufacturers to provide selling support get their products or an additional product um, on the shelf in the store. Uh, it can also arm brands uh, with the mechanism to help retailers validate if a brand is actually a good fit for their specific store. Um, similarly, it can provide selling support for a new product innovation and help to cultivate a narrative for why a specific innovation is necessary for a retailer and or a brand to focus on. Uh, it can also help to identify white spaces and help brands to ensure that their portfolio um, is up to date by closing any gaps and pursuing products that can provide incremental growth for the retailer or if they're in partnership with the retailer as well. Uh, for retailers specifically, baskets can help to optimize shelf assortments. And similarly, for manufacturers, uh, basket analysis can help uh, show retailers and or their retail partners that they may be working with, how their specific product or brand can optimize the shelf assortment at a specific retailer. Um, and lastly, uh, basket analysis can help arm brands and manufacturers with intelligence on where retailers can implement those uh, effective cross merchandising, cross merch, uh, cross category promotions. Um, but it can also help retailers understand which brands, which categories, and which products might be best suited for cost merchandising and cost promotions at a moment in time uh, for specific days of the week, uh, specific seasons, or even various holiday promotions that we know are becoming increasingly popular uh, with retailers. Now, obviously, I just went through a ton of different applications, um, and I'd love to walk you through all of them. But for the sake of time, let's just home it in specifically on one use case and demonstrate in this instance how BDSA's uh, enhanced basket analytics can help brands and manufacturers get selling support for getting their product on the shelf of a prospective retail partner. So for the case of this exercise, let's just have a use case. And let's pretend that I'm a brand manager for an edibles brand that's trying to get my product onto the shelf of an Illinois adult use retailer who isn't currently stocking my brand's edible products. So again, with that understanding that I'm an edible brand trying to get my brand's edible products onto the shelves of an Illinois adult use retailer, uh, we just came up with three challenges that we anticipate that we're going to get pushback from this prospective retailer on. And correspondingly, uh, we've also outlined uh, three high-level solutions that we will highlight throughout this presentation about how basket analysis can provide um, solutions to address and overcome each one of these each one of these challenges that retailers are likely to push back on. 
So this first child all the way here on the left side of our screen, uh, we understand that this particular retailer that we're trying to engage isn't necessarily convinced that they need to put a lot of effort into the edibles category. And they really see more focus on the flower and vape merchandising at the time. So one solution that we can pursue through Basque Analytics is that we can show and confirm that edibles provide considerable contribution to a store's sales and have an additional role of driving multi-category baskets. And that edibles tend to be non-cannibalistic when they're in the basket as compared to some other categories, specifically things like flower and vape where our retail, uh, our prospective retailer partner uh, is focused today. So a second challenge that we anticipate that the retailers are going to come at us with is that the retailer believes that because edibles are lower priced relative to other categories, you know, like bulk flour or uh, concentrates, that their basket value is just not that great. But through basket analytics, we can show the retailer that edibles do in fact drive high basket values uh, relative to things like flour and concentrates in other categories. And even if we've sold them in on these first two challenges and made them feel like we have the answers, uh, the third challenge that we're likely to encounter is that the retailer just isn't sure our brand of edibles is the right fit for them. So here, through Basque Analytics, we can demonstrate valuable thought leadership for the retailer that our brand can help their store, not only with the edibles category, but also show that even though my brand isn't the strongest selling product today, I'm actually a better and a strategically good brand to have on the shelf because I can drive larger basket value than some of my nearest competitors, even those folks who may be outselling me at the store today. So let's first take a look at this slide. And here we're actually showing you a screenshot from one of our basket analytics dashboards that's available uh, for subscription on BDSA's Green Edge platform. And here we can see that in July and Illinois adult use dispensaries, on average, edibles are present in about 143 baskets per day. If you look at the top row and compare that 143 baskets and the number of baskets per day that flour are generating, you can see that it's about 81% of those baskets that flour is bringing in. If you look at the third line down at concentrates, you can see that flour is driving about 71% of the baskets that concentrates are bringing in that day. Now, that being said, if you look at the third column, the items per basket, you can see that when at least one edible is present in the basket, there is at least one more item in the basket on average, which again, if we look at flour and concentrate, we can see that, um, that edibles are actually driving more items per day, on, or more items in the basket, excuse me, uh, than flour and concentrates are. Now, if we were to multiply the average number of baskets per day, and the items per basket, uh, we can show the retailer that in actuality, edible baskets are responsible for about 289 items being sold per day, which is more than the 252 items per day that flour is driving. And it's about 91% of the items that are sold when concentrates like dates or gabbles are present in the basket as well. Now, just to hone in on a couple of reasons why, in this case, uh, we believe that edibles are driving more items in, uh, per basket than some of these other categories. Well, first, we know that edibles, at least in Illinois, and specifically speaking of gummies, tend to come in packs of 10, which means that you're only going to get about 10 usage occasions from that one product, which ultimately means that you're probably going to have a faster replenishment time when the customer has to come back in to re-up their supply of gummies in this instance than you would if someone were to purchase bulk flour or even like a half gram vape cartridge. We also know that in some instances, edible users can be uh, entirely different than some of our inhalable users. Perhaps they're more interested in uh, non-inhalable type formats for health reasons. Uh, we also know that edibles oftentimes are used in different occasions than some of uh, the other classes of products like inhalables. For example, if you know that you can't be um, uh, 
uh, super conspicuous about your uh, consumption there, you know, popping out a vape pen or uh, inhaling a pre-roll, annoying someone about edibles might be a better alternative because they can be more inconspicuous um, and not annoy the folks around you. Uh, we also know that in general, edibles by and large tend to have a lower average retail price in the state of Illinois than most packaged flour and virtually all concentrate products you're going to find on the shelves today. So just a couple of uh, high level reasons why you see some differences in the number of items per day and uh, number of items per basket when we look at edibles compared to things like flour and concentrates. Now, again, still looking on this slide, I had another screenshot from our basket analytics dashboard through the Green Act platform. Uh, we can also confirm, going back to the retailer's uh, challenges, we can also confirm that retailers believe that edibles are in fact lower priced than flour and concentrate, and that's correct. We can also confirm that because the edible itself is lower priced than flour and concentrates, the size of the average basket when each of those items is present shows that edibles are in fact generating smaller basket sizes because the price of edibles is somewhat lower. But if we were to stop right there, we'd be missing a key point and we'd be doing our potential retail partner a disservice because even though the basket for edibles in its entirety is smaller. Uh, you can see here that edibles are driving comparable size incremental dollars attributable to those other items in the basket. You know, you can see if you look at edibles, they're driving about $23 in incremental items from the basket. But if you look at flour, it's only about 50 cents more that flour is generating through those incremental items. In concentrate, it's only about $3 more. So in this instance, we can tell the retailer that even though edibles may seem small in this respect, they can actually be mighty when they're put into a more strategic application within cross-promotion or cross-merchandising applications. So again, looking at another screen from BDSA's basket analysis dashboard in the Green Edge platform, we can also demonstrate for a retailer that edibles are advantageous for retailers to consider for basket building opportunities uh, or cross category promotional consideration. So if we look at the chart here, we can understand what percentage of baskets actually contain multiple items from multiple categories. For example, a gummy and a vape being in the same basket. We can also understand what percentage of baskets contain multiple items from a single category so for example, think of just two different gummy products being present in the basket. And we can also understand what percentage of baskets actually have a single item in the basket. So again, just think of someone purchasing a single uh, packaged gummy product. So here, if we look at the top set of bars that are referring to when a concentrate item, uh, concentrate is present in the basket, we can see that about 33% of the time denoted in that green bar there, that concentrate a concentrate product is the only item that's in the basket. If we look at the third uh, set of bars down, uh, flour, the one flour is present in the basket, we can see that flour has even more likelihood to be a single item in the basket. About 40% of those baskets are only going to contain a single flour item. But if we look at the second row down, looking at when edibles are present in the basket, we can see that edibles only are a single item in the basket about 15% of the time, which is way less than that 33 and 40% that we're seeing for concentrates and flour respectively. Put this another way, about 85% of the time when edibles are present in the basket, there are multiple items in that basket. And most often when edibles are present in the basket, there are other items from a non-edible category. So from a retailer perspective, edibles are going to be a better opportunity for basket building and cost promotion consideration in this instance than flour and concentrates are likely to be. And another thing that, uh, that we would wanna drive home for the retailer in this instance and that they should strongly consider is that they could potentially get double margin on the edible product because they're getting margin not only on the edible, but also the other category that's likely accompanying the edible. 
And even though the margin on edibles may be lower depending on your specific store or your specific unit of stores, uh, you get less servings, which like I mentioned earlier, is probably going to result in more frequent replenishment from the consumer and therefore a more frequent recurrent margin generation for the retail. Now, if we dig just a little bit deeper here, we can also demonstrate for the retailer that edibles are also good basket builders because they generate a larger percentage of non-cannibalized incremental dollars when they're in the basket relative to flour, concentrates, and the other remaining categories, which for space purposes, we've omitted here. Um, and here, we can see that even though flour and concentrates are generating more incremental dollars per day from additional items beyond the initial flour and concentrate item respectively than edibles, more than half of the dollars in those edible baskets, baskets are coming from these additional items. Whereas when we look at concentrates, only about 38% of the incremental dollars from the basket are coming from other items. And only about 30% of those dollar, incremental dollars are coming from uh, the flour are coming from those other items. So very important to consider here. We also know that basket analysis can help identify for those Illinois adult use retailers that Edibles tend to be accompanied by concentrates, which have a high ARP and, as we saw in the previous slide, generate the second largest non cannibalized incremental dollars from baskets. And that's second only to edibles, by the way. So, this demonstrates that if we use edibles as a loss leader or as a mechanism to drive additional category purchases, concentrates represent the most frequent interaction. And this is critical when considering uh, what types of uh, cost merchandising or cost promotions uh, a retailer may want to consider. And this is also important because depending on the physical footprint of the retailer, uh, placement in the store could also be informed by this exercise as well. So in this instance, it might be advantageous if you have um, uh, displays on the store floor to have an edibles display very proximal to a concentrate display. Or if you're a retailer where you have a shelf set behind the point of sale, uh, again, maybe aligning some of those edible products with some of the concentrated products is going to ultimately help encourage some of that cost category purchasing. So I want to just take a step back and have us all remember some of those initial challenges that we've already overcome in just these uh, short amount of slides. So if we recall that first challenge, the retailer wasn't convinced that they need to put a lot of effort into edibles because they're more focused on their big and flower merchandise today. But we've shown them that edibles are worth the effort. We also know that one of the other challenges that we've solved for this retailer is that retailers the retailer believes that edibles, because they're lower priced, that their value, that their basket value isn't all that great. But we've demonstrated that lower ARP items can be advantageous in basket building, cost merchandising, and cost promotion efforts. And by looking more granularly at the brand level, which we're doing here on this slide, we can now start to demonstrate how our particular brand is in fact a right fit for the retailer. So we can address the idea that maybe they're feeling our brand isn't the right fit for them. So if we look here on this slide and look at baskets based on the edible brands present in a basket, we can demonstrate value not only that edibles, that the, the edible category at Illinois Adult Use Retail is valuable, but we can also demonstrate that our brand specifically, when it is in a basket drives more incremental dollars from the basket than when our other competitor competitors brand of edibles are present in a basket. This also illustrates the importance of looking beyond just sales dollars and item ARP when considering which edible products may be best positioned for cross promotion or cross merchandising. Because as you can see here, my brand's basket size is a little bit less than brand two, and it's a little bit less than brand five. We can also see that my brand is generating fewer baskets overall than 
uh, brands four and five. But really, you got to look at this incremental dollars that are coming from the basket and especially illustrate how it's important to choose my brand over maybe some of these stronger selling brands if we're thinking about ways to cross promote and cross merchandise at retailers. So still looking at baskets at the brand level, a PDSA's basket analysis can further help retailers understand which brands are most likely to result in multi-item baskets. And this could also arm brands with knowledge of how their brands may be well suited for retailers to cross promote or cross merchandise. Um, to optimize the sales for the retailer. So if we look at the second row within this bar chart, we can see that when my brand of edibles is present in the basket, there are other items present about 91% of the time. And that more than any other edible brand in this set, my edible brand is most likely to result in multi-item baskets with items from different categories. So in this case, it is best suited for cross-category promotions where the goal for the retailer is to encourage cross-category purchasing. Now, this analysis, even though this is just at the brand level, can also be conducted at the product level. So in theory, I could help a retailer understand which of my specific edible product SKUs would be best to pair with other uh, category product SKUs. And that could either be from my own brand or portfolio, or it could be from another brand that isn't affiliated with my brand. Uh, this type of analysis is also really beneficial because it not only demonstrates my knowledge and ability to help a retailer to optimize their cost category promotions, but if there are specific brands or products that retailer is trying to liquidate from their inventory, like let's say they just, for whatever reason, have a surplus of specific uh, products or categories, BDSA's basket and uh, analysis can also help them prioritize those products and SKUs for which ones are most likely to move uh, with my brand. And we can even go and look at which days, uh, which seasons, which parts of the week, or even which holidays um, are going to be best suited for those types of promotional activity. So throughout this exercise, we demonstrated a basket analysis can better equip brands with impactful insights to get their items stocked at retail, or encourage a retailer to buy in on stocking additional SKUs from a brand. We've also demonstrated how, from a retailer's perspective, basket analysis can better inform and prioritize which brands and product SKUs are best suited for cost promotion. So if you're a brand or a retailer, let's really quickly recap why you should be excited about basket analysis with BDSA's Green Edge platform. Well, for one, basket analysis now provides a robust analysis that covers BDSA's hierarchy down to individual brand houses, uh, individual brands, and even more specifically, uh, specific product SKUs. It also provides flexibility and customization, all from an easy to use and intuitive self-service platform. So once you get access, uh, your analytics team could be in there from the get-go uh, running hypothetical scenarios and providing actionable insights to your broader team. Third, BDSA's basket analysis provides a modular approach to basket analyses by grouping key basket metrics into actionable and logical use cases broken out by different manipulatable dashboards. So again, if you're really interested in understanding what happens uh, to a basket when this particular product SKU is available and I add in this particular category or another brand or even another product SKU, there's a module or a dashboard for that. Uh, if you're looking to understand uh, specifically what, what days of the week a particular SKU might be best actionable to uh, create that cost promotion, there is a uh, dashboard in the product for that. And lastly, if there's additional custom basket work that you want to do that's beyond uh, what uh, is available just in the platform, uh, we can actually work with my team, the professional services team, to do things like a full basket optimization for a store. Or we can help to uh, run an annual promotion schedule to target those specific dates when cross-category promotions are the most advantageous to a retailer. So, if you're interested in learning more about 
basket uh, analysis or how to subscribe if you're not already subscribed, please contact uh, info at bdsa.com or reach out to your dedicated account manager or BDSA salesperson. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and take a moment here and just look at some of the questions that you guys had submitted during the presentation and answer them with the few remaining moments that we have left. Okay, so um, I'm getting questions about uh, if this is going to be available for all BDSA markets. Uh, that is correct. This will be available for any market where BDSA is currently reporting brand and product level information. Okay, I'm getting some questions just about uh, the cost of subscription here. Um, I can't provide a specific quote because things do vary based on uh, which specific markets you'd like to subscribe to and your particular contract. But if you're interested, uh, I would implore you to please uh, reach out to your salesperson and specifically ask about uh, which market you're interested in and about the length of subscription you'd be looking to uh, go for this product. Okay, so looks like those are most of the uh, salient questions here that we're going to address today. Uh, I apologize, we don't have time to get all of these, but uh, again, if you have a question, we'll be sure to reach out and provide you an answer. And if you want to learn more about the product, uh, as I said, please uh, speak to your dedicated BDSA salesperson, or if you don't have one of those, feel free to go to info at bdsa.com and list your needs. Thank you.